Hiya folks, how are we? So, welcome back to the Irish Whiskey Review with me, Martin McCauley. Uh, today we are reviewing Dingle. Lovely little Dingle. Single malt, batch number five. Now, anyone who ever gets a chance of going down to Dingle, I did it in January, it's a fabulous little place. Uh, most famous for having the dolphin, Fungi the Dolphin. Uh, who comes in and everybody gives him a wee pet and whatnot. But this little distillery started back in 2012 and it's, it's, it's a bit of a uh, very small craft distillery. They obviously they, they make their gins and stuff, uh, which was voted one of the world's best gins. I think it was voted the best Irish gin a few years ago. And they started to release their single malts and their pot stills. When was the first one? The first one must have been 2015, 2015, 16. Um, really became really collectible straight away. And they've been releasing this is what they do, they release them in these batches. Now they, they say it's a small batch, but uh, the game's given away a little bit by how small the batch is because they number the bottles. So this is bottle 26,785. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not that small really, let's be honest. It's quite large in the grand scheme of things. Anything once you get over heading towards 30,000, it's not that small. Uh, but the small batch, that's the, way, that's the way they put it across. It's not brought out as a continuous product it's brought out in in batches so boom every release is, is a, a one-off as if you like so this is a mixture of bourbon casks px and madeira casks and they're married together doesn't give uh, the exact way in which they're married together I would imagine that the spirit all started off in bourbon casks and then probably changed over and then finished up uh, finished up just being blended together for for this now this is only been on release um, a few weeks uh, maybe a month or two um, color wise it's I think there's a little colouring in there. I think it's coloured slightly. Uh, but it's, it's non chill filtered. Bottled at 46.5%. Um, the extra half percent, you know, 46% sort of the, the, the amount that you'll bottle it when it's non chill filtered. Again, when the water's put in, it sort of stops that cloudiness coming over. And that would be the cloudiness in the bottle, sorry. Um, but on the nose, um, baked rhubarb, apricot, caramel. There's a, a, a there's a brininess to it. Um, there's a little, there's a little, uh, almost like a sea salt to it. Um, it's on the, the descriptive notes as a salt of caramel, but I don't really get it. As, I think I think it's two sort of separate. It's two separate things. There's like a slight brininess to it, and the caramel is, is a. I, I think they're slightly separate. Yeah, nice nose, but not boom. It's not very. It's not massive punchy. It doesn't have that uh, overly sweet sherry. The sherry doesn't dominate too much in this. It's balanced quite well. Uh, so no, it's it's got more, more of a, more of a brain, brainy, rather than sweet. Uh, it sort of works between the two. On the tongue, honey. Uh, again, not overly sweet. I wouldn't say it's any of the the real sweet flowered honeys. Is that, it, it's more like a sort of neutral honey. Uh, there's vanilla there. Uh, a touch of plum. Um, 
not so much of the cooked fruits. So the, the, the cooked fruits on the rhubarb, the, the, the big rhubarb uh, in the nose doesn't really translate over. It's got a coffee note, but it's kind of ca- it's kind of like a, a latte coffee. It's not a very strong coffee bean. Um, so it's a bit f- it's a bit fresher on the tongue than you might have anticipated. Uh, the the sweetness isn't isn't overly sweet. Um, probably balanced a little bit more by the Madeira than with the the, the sherry. So that brings it down and levels it a little bit. Uh, on the finish, on the finish, a little bit of dark chocolate, very dark chocolate, high high cocoa chocolate, um, darker fruit, darker fruit than would be on the on the palate. Uh, it, it sort of develops into a more sort of cooked fruit. A touch of clove. Um, a little bit of cream there. Uh, again, the sweetness is, is, is balanced. It's not a saccharine sweet. It, it's, a, it's, it's a very luxurious sweet taste to it. Uh, mouthfeel is quite good. Length of finish, very good. The length of finish is... is, is very good. It's seventy pounds a bottle, so um, you're but you're buying a good quality product. Um, Non-age statement, but you know the distillery started in twenty twelve, so the oldest it can possibly be is eight years old. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's probably a little bit younger than that, but it, it's crafted well, so. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's good. It's not blown away. It hasn't blown me away, but it is good. Uh, these guys, the success they had with their early releases, really kind of sparked lots of Irish collectors. Lots of people bought it. They bought various versions of it. Um, cask strength. They bring out cask strength versions that really, really took off. And there's now a sort of revolution that people want cask strength versions. They want as strong as possible, really, so that they can work with it. And it's seen as being, well, a bit more integrity to it. Uh, Personally, I think it can be a little bit overrated. I think there's lots of people go for cask strength versions uh, just to say they have the cask strength version so they can mess around with them. I, I like spanning the whole range if I'm totally honest. Uh, in terms of people having a, a approachability to any bottling, if it's a 40%, the tax is an awful lot lower. People, people a lot of the time, they see a bottle of whiskey and they see it, it's, it's £60, £70, £100 for a bottle. And they're like, oh my God, I'm, I'm used to paying £30 maximum. But if you get something that's, you know, 50%, 55%, um, higher ABVs. You have to remember there's a lot more tax to be paid on these. So really what you're getting is there'll be less product, so the price has to go up. There's more tax to be paid on it. There's all of these factors when it comes to cash strength. So the higher the alcohol, the ABV, the more it's going to cost in terms of just production and also in tax. So you are getting something that you can play about with but it is much more expensive. So I know people, money for money for a lot of people is, is uh, not too tight to mention, but it is these days, lots of people who want to actually drink the liquid. The problem Dingle kind of has a little bit was that they were seen as being collectible. So no one really, not too many people bought and actually drank the first few expressions because they bought them to collect and they weren't really drunk on by huge numbers of people. Uh, certainly not the, the, the guy walking in off the street to pick up a bottle to take home and drink on a you know a Wednesday night or a, a, a have a, a few on a Saturday night. So I think Dingle established themselves quite well with the collectors for the other 
ordinary common or garden drinker. It's a little bit expensive. It's a little bit this. And that. You know, there's there's a few things stumbling blocks for the ordinary drinker. But do consider this as a as a birthday present, as a Christmas present for for your your whiskey drinking partner, or uncle, or grandfather, or whatever. Because uh, you not be disappointed. This is something that is not familiar to an awful lot of, of people uh, who are in the main whiskey drinkers. So I recommend that you go out, try and get yourself a bottle of, of Dingle. It's become that it's not as collectible uh, now. People people want it the first, they all want the firsts. And the, the, the collectors, they'll pick it up. This is something that is worth trying. It's worth going and getting. Worth making sure that you take a run down sometime. They do tours. Um, the tour, they're not touring a huge area. It's not a big space. But it's really, really well done inside. It's, it's lovely. It's kind of that steampunk thing. It's not clinical the way some distillery tours can be. Um, the, the, the guys down there are really, really pleasant and nice. Every, pretty much everybody in the Irish whiskey industry is really really pleasant and nice so if I had to pick this as a really easy to drink um, put a little bit of water in it just to see I don't really think it needs it but me tiny just a couple of drops just to let it Open up a little bit and give it a wee second, let it decant a little. Mm -hmm. well, yep, change, just change it. Um, bring in one of the, a lot more of the, the fresh fruit coming through now. And the, 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 the baked elephant has moved away and it's kind of fresher. So more of the uh, apricot, a little bit of apple estuary coming through. Yep. Yeah. On the palate, still the same honey, but more fresh fruit. Um, as I said about plum, I was moving a little bit away from that and coming in with the, the, the more slightly more of the fresh fruit, sort of. Um, pear, uh, red apple, um, yeah, more more French fruit. The coffee's still there. The coffee, and if anything, the coffee's actually come on a little bit. Yeah, coffee's come on a, a little bit more. The finish, still the spice, that clove. Um, plenty of chocolate vanilla coming through on the finish an awful lot more on the finish especially towards the end uh yeah yeah you could drink this without the water but i would i would, I would definitely definitely try it with a few drops of water in um probably probably more balanced with, with water in it if i'm honest uh it freshens it up a little and makes it makes it an awful lot more fresh and free when it's full strength um, there seems to be a little bit of a little bit of a discrepancy a couple of drops of water yeah I'm quite surprised by just by just the difference that the water's making gives it a bit more balance um, yeah on the whole again I'll give it a fairly decent seven and a half out of ten um, I think it's I think it really could do with uh, what, I'm trying to think of just just exactly what it needs. It it's good and it's well crafted and well done, but it's not just punchy enough. It's not just punchy enough at, at, at the cast at the forty six and a half. There's a little bit of water in it. It mellows it. Still not punchy, but it freshens it. Um, 
and I, I prefer it with a couple of drops of water in it actually. So bingo, keeping up the good work. This is very good. Again, it's a little bit of water and it makes a, it makes a significant difference. So stay safe everybody, take care and God bless.